Hey guys, it's the Macintosh Guide, and today we've got a very interesting video. I've just been able to pick up the M2 MacBook Pro. Uh, this is the M2 Max version, uh, 16 inch. Um, and yeah, we're gonna be doing some exciting comparisons today. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in a bit. So guys, here it is. It's the M2 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro. This has got 32 gigs of RAM, 12 core CPU and it has a 38 core gpu now interestingly enough when i went to the apple store and picked this machine up today apple don't use that wrapping anymore which is which is a surprise um it, when i got my 2021 16 inch macbook pro it came with like a film wrapping but it seems like apple's now gone away with that so that's brilliant to see um it's just got two pull tabs at the back so let's get straight into it so as you can tell the lid's off the macbook pro is obviously in its packaging now i've got the silver model um as you can see here guys all right let's just see what comes in the contents of the box so we've got the normal apple shenanigans little booklet they always give we've got the charging head we've got the power brick um and of course we got the cable now what's interesting this year is if you get the space gray model, you get a space gray version head. Um, I've got the silver one, so the head is still gonna be silver. Um, but yeah, let me unwrap this machine, get it booted up, and yeah, let's just get straight into the benchmarks. Just also the ports. So SD card slot, USB-C uh, slot, I think it's Thunderbolt 4, um, HDMI 2.1, which is better than the old HDMI ports. Um, the MagSafe, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and a headphone jack. So it's the same as what the previous 2021 model was. We all love a good boot up for the machine. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Just booting the machine up, just going through the, the Wi Fi process, and this is an interesting message. I don't think I've ever seen this in any other versions of Mac OS, guys. A software update is required for this Mac. It will be updated to 13.2. So let's just continue. Not seen this before. Seems to be something new that Apple put in with Ventura. So guys, this is my M1 Max 16 inch machine. This has 32 gigs of RAM and it has the 24 core GPU processor. Whereas this one has 32 gigs of RAM, M2 Max and 32 gigs of RAM with the 38 core GPU, 12 core CPU, 10 core CPU. There's a difference in the GPU and the, and the CPU core, two extra CPU cores and six extra GPU cores. So we're gonna do some tests now. Um, there's no differences, both the ports on both machines is the same, there is no difference. Um, so yeah, let's just get straight into the tests. Um, first test we're gonna be doing is going to be Geekbench score so i'll do the geekbench test on both machines and i'll show you guys the score on both of them all right so just pausing the video right now just to see the specs of the machines so first results have come through the 16 inch 2021 m1 max scored 1780 in the single core and 12695 on the multi-score um we're seeing a good 20% rise there. We're seeing 2080 in the single core and 15,072 on the multi core. So, yes, both it seems to be a 20% improvement as Apple State um, in terms of the CPU. Now, I'm going to do the, the GPU component test um, on both machines. So, I'll be back. So, just did OpenCL GPU tests 51,855 and on the M2 Max. We've got 73,599. So huge, huge increase. Now, just bear in mind, guys, this is the 24 core GPU model. So this is 14 less than the M2 Max. Um, when I mentioned earlier regarding the, it has six extra cores of GPU, it's comparing it to the 32 core GPU. I, I, that's what I was talking about. So um, from a 24 core GPU perspective, this is a substantial increase onto the M2 Max. Now we're going to do a metal test. 
So the metal score has shot up, so 59,987 on the M1 Max and 84,646. So we're looking at about a 24,000 increase, which is amazing. Um, now let's get on to the next test, guys. So we're going to be doing the Cinebench test now. Um, the way I'm doing these tests is by having the charger plugged in, just to make sure that it's using the best amount of performance it can get. So um, I'm going to start off with doing the test on the M1 Max, and then I'll switch over to the DM2 Max. The score I'm interested in is the multi-core score, guys. I am not interested in the single core, let's just make that clear. On both machines I will be doing the multi-core test. So guys, the results are in the M1 Max, the multi-core is 12,343 and the M2 Max, is, the multi-score score is 14,809 points. So fairly close, I'd still say, you know, it's about 1,500 to, to sorry, not 1,500, I'd say it, it's, it's about 2K difference. Um, but again, they both chugging along absolutely fine. You're not really going to notice this much difference in the real world. So. Um, yeah, that's, that was the Cine bench. Now we're going to do the Nova bench test. So I've got Nova bench on both machines. Um, interesting thing, as soon as I opened up Nova bench, the first thing it said to me, it doesn't support Apple Silicon yet. It's going to be running through Rosetta. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do the test on both machines right now. Interesting results in Nova bench. So CPU score being 301. RAM score being 413, GPU score being 786, and the disk score being 111. Metal 3D score, 113 FPS. You didn't do one on OpenCL. And the, the read and write speed, 655 and 723, respectively on the M1 Max. Um, and then on here, the Nova score result was obviously 2012. 331 CPU score. 431 RAM score, uh, 984 GPU score, and 266 disk score, uh, 159 on the Metal 3D, and 705 megabytes on write and read being 3,955. So read speeds on the M1 Max, substantially low compared to on the M2 Max. I'm going to have a slide after this benchmark to show you guys the the full results so yeah crazy 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 scores but yeah let's move on to the next test so welcome to the next part of the test we're going to be doing the unigen heaven benchmark um i'm going to be doing three tests and then i'm going to show you all three results for low medium and high these are the settings as shown and they are also will be the exact same on the M2 Max. So once I've done all three tests in low, medium and high, I will replicate low, medium and high on the M2 Max. And then I'll show you guys all three results on the screen. And then we'll go a bit more into that information. So the M1 Max results for the Unigen Heaven benchmark were very interesting to say the least. Um, on the low settings, it gave us 113.1 as FPS, minimum being 17.1, maximum being 221. Um, then we're moving it up to the medium level, and that gave us 102.9 with a score of 2591, with a minimum being 16.3, and the maximum FPS being 198.2. And then we saw very minimal and surprising scores after this. So on high settings, we got an FPS of 100.6, score of 2535, minimum being 19.4, and the maximum FPS being 198.3. And then that kind of led me onto doing the benchmark on Ultra, just to see how it is. And that gave us an FPS of 100.3, 2528 as a score. 21.7 minimum FPS, which is strange, and the maximum FPS being 194.4. So it 
doesn't make much sense, but yeah, it seems to still give good FPS on, well, on Ultra. And on the M2 Max, obviously the scores look substantially better. Um, so on low, we got 170.4 as our, as average FPS, um, score being 42.92. That's a huge increase. Um, minimum being 20.7 and the maximum of FPS being 351.2. Now, when we did it on medium, we got 153.5 as FPS, 38.67 as the score, 26.3 as the minimum, and the maximum being 304.6. The high preset gave us 150.1 for FPS, 37.81 as a score, um, minimum FPS being 25, and the maximum being 301.9. And on ultra settings... It gave us FPS of 148.3, score of 37.36, minimum FPS being 27.1, and maximum FPS being 29.8. So, 29.8.2, sorry, I apologise. Um, but it, it, it's substantially, substantially better than the M1 Max. So, yeah, the M2 completely wrecks the M1 Max on, on, on the GPU load. So now we're going to be doing the Xcode benchmark test. I've got it loaded up already on the M1 Max and over here on the M2 Max. Um, what I will do is I will press enter on both the devices and start the stopwatch. As soon as it's done, it will also output how long it took on the on both the machines anyway. So it will show you the seconds um, that it took to, to complete this. So... Once that is done, guys, I will show you guys the result. So this is running the test right now. It's a bit of an odd one, guys. This one seems to just flung straight into it. This one seems to be struggling. The M2 Max seems to be struggling a bit. It, I mean, we'll find out the results in a few, but yeah, just an odd one. Well, 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 guys, what a result we have got right here. So, the M1 Max, first of all. By the way, both running the same operating system, just to let you know. The Xcode benchmark finished in 101.556 seconds. As you can see, it started at 239p at dot 20 seconds. Uh, it ended at 241-5 seconds. Um, that's, that's, that's great. That's fantastic. That's really quick. And then we talk about the M2 Max. Completely destroyed it. Um, build succeeded in 81.801 seconds. That made me literally bite my tongue of what I was saying in the previous section uh, when the test was compiling on both machines. It started at 2.39pm and like it ended at 2.40pm, 52 seconds by. Guys crazy crazy performance game that is 20 seconds it, it's shedding a lot of time in your build time so um the m2 max is the one for developers a hundred percent uh i shall now see you guys in the next benchmark and once again these are the xcode benchmark results so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this one gigabyte file onto my desktop on the M2 Pro, M2 Max. And let's just see how long it takes. Less than a minute, so it's it's very quick, guys. Like a gigabyte file, you're not gonna have a single problem um, on the M2 Max to, to get it over there. You go. So that, that literally is taking, I would say probably around 30 seconds to copy one gig file over, so not an issue at all. Here is the Blackmagic speed test that I did for the M2 Max. So guys, just going to be doing the same test on the M1 Max. And I mean, as you probably see throughout the video guys, the M1 Max is a brilliant machine. It's only, it just came out at the end of 2021, so it's not even old. 
you can get a really good deal on refurbs and as you can say it's already chugging along it's got less than a minute to, to throw over a one gigabyte file so yeah it's pretty much on par with what the m2 max is i believe the m2 max is just slightly quicker than the m1 max but again you will not regret buying this machine and again guys here's the m1 max blackmagic speed test result as well so final cut pro brought some interesting results um for the m1 max we did a h.264 better quality better quality video um it was 34 minutes long it was about 15 15 gigabytes of data um exported as 4k it took 24 minutes and 39 seconds to complete and a 14 minute video which is about 8 gigabytes of file exported also as 4k and that took 9 minutes 58 seconds so nearly 10 minutes there the m2 max however same everything in terms of settings it took 19 minutes and 32 seconds to do the 34 minute video and a 14 minute video t which was 8 gigs of file that took 8 minutes and 14 seconds so it is again 20% faster and it definitely shows in the results overall this is what we what we've been what we've been seeing and apple have done a tremendous job now am i going to be upgrading my m1 max machine to the m2 max unfortunately i will not be doing this i my m1 max machine is running absolutely fine this baby will be with me for another couple of years um and i just don't see the need to upgrade from this to the m2 max um so yeah that's that's me personally guys so after a long day of testing both machines the m2 max is is the clear winner here and a lot of the test results have been around the 20 percent mark so it seems like apple are telling you the truth 20 percent is the difference that we're seeing in, in most of these results now if you have an m1 max or an m1 pro macbook pro do i suggest that you should upgrade no you should not upgrade from the m1 max or m1 pro if you are coming from an intel machine then i would suggest this would be a viable upgrade so if you're coming from a 2019 15 or 16 inch macbook pro um or before then the m2 pro and the m2 max are going to be an amazing machine and you'll notice the difference straight away um However, you can pick up a lot of the M1 Max and M1 Pro machines for a good refurbished price on Apple's website. And I would highly suggest doing that before looking into buying the M1, the M2 Pro and the M2 Max chips, um, laptops. They are more expensive in the United Kingdom. So, it, you know, 20% overall in time isn't going to be that substantial uh, and also you're not going to notice it on a day-to-day -day basis as much um, if you're just, a, you know, if, if you're buying some of the base model machines for the M2 versions um, and the M1 version. So it, it makes sense for a consumer to buy a refurbished M1 Max or an M1 Pro machine. Um, but if you've got the money and, you, and you're coming from an Intel machine, this, the M2 and the M2 Pro and the M2 Max are going to be the best option. Um, yeah guys that's that's pretty much it full day of testing enjoyed it a lot of amazing results that we saw you know m2 max pretty much won in every single place um if you like this video leave a like and also do subscribe guys and i shall see you guys in the next video